Hi everybody, it's Kenny Daigle, KD Cuts. Hope you're having a great day. In today's video, we're going to put together this new kit from Tandy, the Aspen Wallet Kit. Tandy's come out recently with a bunch of new kits that I would call minimalist designs. And this one comes in three different sizes. I picked the medium size for this video. So let's go over to the workbench and open it up. Okay, so take the cover off of that. Now the first thing Tandy did with these kits is they give you a full size pattern. Which I think is fantastic. This uh, harkens back to the good old days in the 80s and 90s. I have plenty of Tandy templates <laughs> from kits from days gone by. Now this kit is pretty simple. There's only two pieces. There's the body and then there's a retaining strap that goes across the front. Now, the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to take my uh, large format matting tool, the Folsom, the ugliest leather tool you'll ever own, and I'm going to texture the surface of the body and the uh, closure strap. And then I'm going to do an acrylic paint pool on this project. Now, I've done more than one video on acrylic paint pooling, so go check those out if you're interested. And we're going to go ahead and get started. All right, so I've prepared the main body by casing it and putting shipping tape on the back so it doesn't lose its shape from the tooling process. I've already done the closure strap. I've used the Folsom to texture it. And then I've put in a floor de lis after doing the matting or background stamping. Again, I can call that texture over stamping. So we're going to go ahead and put a cool texture like this on the main body. I have tooled and dyed the body with EcoFlow Black, both inside and outside. I want the inside to be black. Now, if you go back and look at my other videos on acrylic paint pouring, I've done this in black because when we do an acrylic paint pool on this, eventually you're going to have some wear in the acrylic, and I would rather the acrylic be wearing into a black background than the flesh tone background of the uh, veg tan. So I'm going to go away. I'm going to uh, mask off the inside because I don't want any of the uh, acrylic paint pour to get on the inside of the uh, bag. And then we'll go ahead and get paint pouring. Well, we're ready to paint pour. Might be hard to see, but you'll notice I have the body of the Aspen wallet and the strap set up in a vertical configuration. I've got my six colors. I've got metallic blue, metallic green, metallic violet, silver gold, and metallic red. When I originally set these up, it was a four to five ratio uh, medium to paint. Here's my mediums. Okay, go back and look at my other videos discussing the use of mediums. You've got both Floatrol and the gloss. If you want a glossy finish, you use the gloss. If you want a matte finish, you don't use the gloss. I call this a gravity pour. We're going to let gravity do creative, here, do the creative work. So let's get paint pouring.
Okay, guys, I'm having a little trouble with my blue. Seems to be clogged up. Whoops. It happens. Got plenty of time, plenty of flow medium in this paint. Uh, we'll be okay here. Now guys, I'm going to be very patient here. I'm going to spend a lot of time looking at this, making sure I didn't miss any surfaces, okay? But if I did, it's another reason for using the black as a back color. So right here, you can see a little spot I need a little color at. I'm just going to take one of my paints, okay? And boom. Now, um, I'm going to let this thing set up really nice. And when I'm comfortable, uh, I'm going to take it and move it into a horizontal position. And then I'll show you what it looks like when we're finished. All right, so I finished the paint pour. And I've also uh, taken off my masking on the back. Now you'll notice I've got a little few places where there's some bleed. I'm going to sand that out reapply some black dye and then I'm going to gum tragant the inside of this wallet. Now after about 20 minutes of the piece being vertical I put it in a prone position so there was you know more horizontal position. After about four hours and the paint had set up I took it and I gave it a little, a gentle folding for its final position, right? This is going to be folded over. Here's the strap, the closure strap. Now, I'm going to take the fleur-de-lis in that closure strap, and I'm going to paint it black and show you a little something there as well. All right, so... I've got everything more or less ready to sew up. What do you think? I think it came out great. Now the strap is connected between the ninth and the 16th hole. And there's one, somebody in the background, one of my neighbors doing some work. <laughs> and uh, there's one hole on the back. So you have uh, one less hole on this front. Make sure you align those holes properly. I have already glued the two uh, halves in place. I'm going to glue down the strap 
and then stitch it up and show you what it looks like when it's finished. Now one other thing in the instructions, they talk about this edge really creasing that down before you started. I did not do that. You'll notice it looks just fine. You do whatever you want. With a paint pour like this, I felt it was better not to uh, do a real hard crease on either the bottom or the top. We're done. The Tandy Aspen Clutch. What do you think? I think it came out pretty nice. I used a white thread that came with the kit, neutral or white thread. I edged in black. I did a black edge coat. And of course I did the black uh, EcoFlow that I gum traganced smooth as an airplane flies into New Orleans International Airport. <laughs> and I put the Fleur de Lee accent on the front. Now, word here, uh, I very carefully scratched that with an X-Acto knife to make sure the paint would stick to that, okay? So if you're going to paint over your acrylic like that, you're going to have to rough it up a little bit so it'll take the paint. So let's summarize. We used the uh, Folsom to texture the leather. We did a vertical gravity paint pour. Very cool look. I did not smooth out this edge. Oh, I didn't do a hard crease on this edge or this edge, okay? Those are smooth rounds, if you will. I definitely see coming back to this kit, doing other things. Uh, I think Tanya did a great job. There's several new kits like this that are very minimalist in design. I could see putting a button stud right there for a closure or a strap to make it a crossbody bag or a little hand strap as well. This kit was a lot of fun. I think you get a lot of fun if you uh, take on this kit. So that's it. If you found this interesting, please hit the like button down below and subscribe to my YouTube channel and stay tuned for other interesting topics in leatherwork. Talk to you soon.